Hey guys, Teresa Barber with Sippy Couture. Today I'm going to show you how to make this fishing lure tumbler. It's super easy. I know you guys are going to love it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and also go check us out on Facebook, our Sippy Couture community Facebook group. Um, we're doing some lives, coupon codes, and giveaways, and you can also find me on TikTok. Hope you enjoy this. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and start off with these fishnet stockings. Um, I don't even know where I got these from. Probably grabbed them at CVS, Walmart, anywhere guys. Um, anywhere, dollar store, wherever you can find these stockings. And this is how I do it. Um, I went ahead and spray painted my tumbler white and then I did silver. I didn't want to leave it silver um, because the silver that it kind of has isn't completely shiny. Um, and I wanted it to be a shiny background. Um, I see a lot of people doing them with white. And I like the way, how am I putting this on? And I like the way that the silver looks. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my little way of doing this. And hopefully I can help you. It's such an easy design. All right, so it's going to be about right there. We're going to pull it tight. So we want to cut it about there. So this is all the size that you need for this 30 ounce that we're going to be working on. Not long at all. I'm gonna put this away and I do reuse these stockings. Um, I find that I could get maybe three or four uses out of them. After they dry, I take them, then I just kind of pull them apart and it releases all of the dried up spray paint. All right, so this is how we're gonna put this on. I use staples. Um, I do it this way, that way I don't have a big old knot on the bottom and it's not pulled weird. Um, I don't know, just my way of doing it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open these staples just a little, and I'm going to loop it through and attach it. This way I can kind of adjust how it's pulling and, um, and kind of get it to play exactly how I want. And like I said, the good thing about this is that not tying it on the bottom, I don't have a big old round mark where if I wanted to leave, um, you know, do the bottom of it, it won't have, you know, a big old knot loop in it it will have kind of a cleaner finish. And what I do is I have my thing, my thing in there already. The other part of why I do it this way is that I found a few times when I went ahead and put my stocking in it and then um, whatever sponge I was using, it slid out whenever I was like turning it upside down and trying to spray paint it. Um, this way, it can't quite slide out. These, uh, I can't think today, man. <laughs> These, uh, what are they called? Honeycomb inserts from Dino's are amazing. I mean, I haven't had anything slide off with them, so I'm not even really concerned about it. Some more. I'm not concerned about it sliding out at all anyway, but just in case. So put it through here, open the other side, and then I'm going to stretch it across. Like I said, I know there's a ton of ways to do this. This is just how I operate. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. We can go through and pull this tighter. So right there, we can pull that tighter in a minute to get it to fall where we want. I had a better stapler that didn't close a staple. <laughs> it would actually be a worse staple stapler that didn't close the staples all the way, but um, I, I don't know. It's being weird. Pretty sure it's jammed. Not sure which one of my people jammed it, but it doesn't want to operate. That other one's perfect though. Like it doesn't, this stapler is a beast. Like you can hear it when I click it. Um, that other one, it just, it's so funky that it doesn't even staple all the way. And that would be ideal, but this isn't too bad. So just keep opening your staples a little and stretching it from side to side. The way that this ends up falling is that once you get to the middle part, um, it kind of works out perfect where you have just a tiny little piece in there where if you wanted to, um, like where it all comes together, where if you wanted to put a sticker or a logo on the bottom and still to the bottom of the tumbler, that um, logo sticker will cover where it's all gathered. Keep attaching till I get the look that I want. The colors that we're doing today, I have a bunch of neons pulled and then a deeper green. I think a forest green. I have neon yellow, neon orange, neon green. 
This one was really stuck. Okay, so you see how that comes up right there? We're gonna pull that and fix it so that it looks better. You see how it's gathered? But that is a cool thing about it too, is that if you want to kind of have a gathered look at the bottom, you can definitely leave it like that, um, not with a chunk, obviously, but you know, have smaller scales toward the bottom of the tumbler. I know that when I was tying them, it was kind of hard to get different textures of scales in different sizes, because once you tie it, it kind of came together all in one piece. All right, so we have that. And now is when we can really work on this design and see what we want to change. Right there, it's kind of pulled, so we will tighten that spot up. We can spread them out. I'm gonna bring that part closer in. One of those times where I cut my nails off again, guys. Pull that. Go there. All right. I'm going to go to the top and we're going to fix the top. I'm going to hook it across the, um, bring it all the way across. That way it kind of gives me a really secure, a secure grab on. And then we're going to pull right here to enclose that in. And that might be it. Takes a little more time, but um, it's one of my weird things that I do. <laughs> That's how it looks like. A few staples grabbing all together. It's gathered at the bottom. You can adjust this so that if you wanted to put a logo sticker, it would be right here. Um, I could actually take that and move it in all the way to really make up for that space where you won't have that little line right there from the staple because you will see a flat little line from the staple. I don't do the bottom of my tumblers anyway. Um, I use my cup edging tool and I leave the bottom of my tumblers open. So um, that really isn't that big of a deal for me. But um, there we go. It's all ready to go. It's not going to fall out. All right, time to go outside. Okay, so I say this part a lot, but just in case you're new to my channel, I'll say it again. Um, I use a dowel rod whenever I spray paint. I find that it's a lot easier to um, turn my tumbler and get a good spray paint coverage um, without me having to twist my arm in a bunch of circles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of make a belly of a fish. Um, I'm gonna start right here where this piece is kind of weird. You know, well, may that be the fin, may that be the back. All right, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna go down and then we're gonna bring our paint out a little. So go straight and then curve with the tumbler. See which way the wind's blowing today. Oh, that's not a good angle. Okay, let me turn. How do I do this? Let's see if this way will work. Sorry, guys. All right. Oh, this spray paint. All right, we're gonna go down. I'm not even worried about these specks that are coming out of here because it kind of ends up, it ends up looking cool anyway. All right, so go. Your only thing is that you don't want to glob on the spray paint right now. I'm going to go over with this color because I want that to lighten into one of the other colors. I have another one out here. I'll probably end up having to use. Hopefully it sprays. The spray paints I've been getting lately are driving me nuts. Like none of them have been wanting to work. Let's try this fluorescent. There we go. Bring that color out a little. And then we're gonna transition now to orange. So we're just kind of giving a side and kind of playing along that line how it curves. We can touch this up. Like I said, you just don't want too much spray paint. And then for this back, I'm going to go with this yellow again, because right here is going to be a solid green piece. It's going to be green, but I want it to fade. 
And I find it always looks better with the little yellow first that helps blend it off of that orange. Oh my goodness, is this green not gonna work? Tell you what. Nope, okay, we're not using that one today. Let's see if this guy wants to work. This is Hunter Green, and it's gonna be this back stripe. Whenever you look at the tumbler, this back stripe is gonna match evenly with this front. So don't hold too close, hold it a little further away. And give yourself a few quick bursts. I'm gonna bring in that yellow again. Since I don't have lime green, that uh, darker green and this yellow will make the color that I want. So I'm gonna spray that over the two. Do it again on this side. I can see a little of the silver through there and I want that to be a little better. So I'm gonna drop some more orange. Same thing here, make sure it's covered. And then I'm gonna kind of accent with that yellow again. Uh oh, the one that doesn't work. And I'm gonna pull this yellow this way. I'm gonna pull it into that orange. Now, one of the other fun things I like to do, I'm gonna to touch up that a little more to give it a little, little better fade. All right, so this is one of the things I like to do and this is why my, pay paint, my spray paints kind of spit stuff out. Um, I'll take it and I'll kind of do like burst where you'll get a few, you'll get a few drips falling. So it'll kind of give it speckles. The only thing when you're doing this is that, um, be careful you don't do a full spray. Another way you could do this, I would probably be a lot better right now is if I spray painted this onto a plate and then with the gloved hand, just took it and flicked it out there to give kind of speckles. Um, just not really feeling that right now. All right. Do for a burst to give it some kind of, I don't know if you can see it through there, but there's a few dots right there that end up right along that green line. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna take a look at it and see if there's any spots I wanna fix. I really don't think I do. Don't tug on this. As you're spray painting, don't tug on this, guys. Let this sit. Because if I were to move it right now or shift it, it's going to mess up all that paint. This has to dry completely before we take it off. Um, but that's that's it. That's how easy this design is. Um, once we get all the decals on it, it really plays it off really, really well. But um, for now, that's, um, that's it. That's all we have to do. I just remembered while I'm thinking of it, um, if you do the bottom of your tumbler, what you'll do is continue your colors on the bottom. So as you spray that, turn your tumbler and get the bottom and go across. That way the bottom's taken care of too. Um, I didn't show you the bottom, I'll show you really quick. But I would take this, I would go up and then I would go across. I'd take that darker green. Spray it there. Give my orange straight across. and then blend with the neon. You pretty much spray those like you would do a pizza, um, like you would do cutting a pizza. Uh, do your orange straight across, your lime um, neon straight across, that just right there, and then make an X to blend it with your, um, your neon yellow. So, all right, now that's it. Like I said, let this dry completely. We're not gonna take this off for a minute because we don't want that paint to smear. All right, this has been sitting for about uh, three or four hours. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the stocking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhook the top of these the little staples. And we didn't close the staples back down whenever we attach them. Um, so it's easier to do. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to lift it away from the cup. So just gently pull it off the cup.
We're not gonna drag it over the top yet because we don't want the staples to scratch it. Um, there aren't that many times that actually happens. So just lift it away. The other reason why we're kind of slowly lifting it away is that if there's any areas where the paint was too thick, if I were to rip this off, it would pull off that paint. So we're just gonna slowly lift it up. Pull it away from the tumbler. And then we can just slide it off. And there we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this on, um, on the turner and get some epoxy on it. All right, we have our epoxy mixed up. I have uh, Mr. Nola's Speed Dry Epoxy. It's a fast setting epoxy and I'm gonna mix in some pectoral punch. Um, it is one of their snowball collection. It's really pretty. It has a slight shimmer to it. I usually, um, well, I, yeah, usually, definitely do not put um, shimmer on guys' tumblers, but something about this fish tumbler, um, it really looks good with a little bit of that shimmer coming through it. And depending on what type of fish I do is, um, is how much or what color shimmer I put in it. There's a few different colors in this collection that they have of that light shimmer. Um, and I went with a silver one since the back of this is silver. If I was doing anything that was kind of like a gold base fish, then I would go ahead and switch that to kind of a gold, um, like a gold reflection off of it, a gold glitter. And like I said, it's super, super fine. I believe it's part of the Snowball collection, but it is a really, really fine glitter. Uh, so I got that mixed in there. Hopefully you can see how much I put in there. Um, it wasn't a lot. It was kind of, I dipped it in and just, um, just a little that was on my popsicle stick. So we're gonna go ahead and spread this on. This is kind of how I spread mine. I drop it and then I just let it roll around and do the work for me. This epoxy is fairly uh, fairly thick, but it does go on in nice, um, it, it's best if it works thin, but with it being a thicker epoxy, it goes on really nice and it ends up builds up to a thick coat. Um, I just love it. There's a lot of times where I'll go through and I will do the um i'll do an epo i'll do this epoxy over a decal and i like don't even need another set of epoxy like the decal is perfectly covered or even glitter um i'll do this epoxy over glitter and it's just the coverage is so great that i really don't have to um go through with another coat before i can get a decal on it all right we get some more out of here I had a good bit mixed up and I set a few other cups, so this definitely thickened on me a little quicker than I thought today. Um, but I can add a little bit of heat, get it to thin out, and then it will cover the whole tumbler. Now what I'll do is as this cures, if I get a really nice even coat and I cannot feel the texture of the paint, then I will go straight with decal. If I can feel even the slightest bit of texture from where the paint's layered, then I will do another coat before a decal. Um, I do not want to have all of this hard work be kind of ruined by bumps in my decal just from not doing another coat. So depending on how it falls, is um, it will be the deciding factor. And like I said, I don't do the bottom of my tumblers, so I'm not gonna bring that all the way around, but I'm gonna bring it to the bottom. And then in the next step, I'll show you how to trim off um, that bottom if you don't wanna do the bottom of your tumblers. Get okay, what's off my glove. All the bubbles really work themselves out really great with this, um, so I really don't need to torch it. I always feel like I do it just as habit, safety, just in case, but I can already see that went on a gorgeous coat, perfect. Um, I can tell that I will need another coat to this. I can see a few spots where that paint kind of has a few bumps in it, just the texture of the stocking. Some of those fuzzies kind of get on there and leave an imprint, and I want to make sure, like I said, this is a nice coat before I go ahead with my decal so we'll let this sit Oops. I have a little bubble that's coming out of that seam I'm gonna have to watch that all right so we're gonna let this sit like I said a fast setting epoxy so it can go um, for three hours I'll come back uh, pull it from here sand it off and then we'll get another layer of epoxy on 
All right, hopefully I can um, get this in a right spot where you guys can see it uh, for this video. So this did end up needing two layers of epoxy on it. Through the first layer, you could kind of see the texture um, of some of the scales, and it really has to be a smooth surface whenever we're putting this down, especially with some of the vinyl that we're using. So we're gonna go ahead on first with the front of the fish. That's gonna go in the yellow part where it kind of went out a little, um, where it kind of went out a little right here. And we're gonna go with this little um, fish belly type look. Get this down. And this is kind of just one of those designs where it doesn't have to look exactly like a fish. Um, there's a few different elements that I do put on here with a name. So you know, it's more of a tumbler with a fish idea in mind. So it's not gonna have, you know, perfect placement of everything um, as far as like how a fish looks. So like I said, this is gonna go on the front. Um, not quite a way I could show this to you guys. I have to stand it up, I'm so sorry. Just wanna make sure I get it on perfect. All right, so we have that. What I do is I place it on, I push down the middle first, and then I go through and I work each part down. Because with it being a curved tumbler, um, if I were to just press it flat, some of these pieces will kind of fold up on each other. So press that in. And we'll go through and make sure it's on good before we remove this transfer paper. And I just use clear contact paper whenever I'm transferring designs. Um, I find it's cheaper than other transfer paper. All right, so that, and then I have a little silver dot that I put in the eye. Come on. And then I'm going to go on again with a black one. I'm sticking to everything right now. Okay, so that's the front. And then we will go straight on the back because I at least want that to be even with the, with the front and back. So I have my lid on as a guide so that I know where the front and back is. So I line up the front of that mouth exactly with the middle of this design. I turn it to the back and we're gonna put this long piece right here. Sure that little anchor stays, not anchor, um, the hook stays down because I don't need that yet. All right, and this is gonna go even with this part on the back and it's gonna go straight down. I do the same thing whenever I lay this down. I put it at the top, go straight down from the middle, and then even it out. And then one of the sides is going to get the scales. So what I'll do is I'll turn my lid sideways. I'm not scales, goodness these hooks. So I'll turn my lid sideways and find that center point. That way I can still line up the name and the back of this fairly even. So we'll get these little hooks on one side. The vinyl that I'm using for this is Tech Wrap Silver Chrome. I love this vinyl. Super easy to weed. It comes out really pretty. 
I never have an issue with the epoxy being weird on it. Um, I really, really love tech wrap. So this is tech wrap vinyl that we're using. And I just get it off Amazon. And then this other side is the name. We have a little outline for this. We have the silver on the back and then the name on the front. I don't like to layer um, off of the cup. I feel like I get bubbles for some reason. So I always layer my vinyls on the cup. So we're gonna lay down the back part first. And the same thing with this, you'll kind of have it wanting to, um, to wrinkle sort of in the middle. So lay it down and go a little at a time. Whenever you're laying it down on a curved surface, go from the inside and like I said, flatten it out from there. All right, this is one of the things that um, I can definitely show you guys. So right here, there's a little bubble that came up in this, but I'm putting black on top and you won't be able to see that bubble. So we're gonna put a little poke in it and then flatten it down. And then this black vinyl, it will go ahead and cover that. I use my transfer paper so much. Um, I just keep reusing the same pieces. So by the time I get to the end of it, they are starting to get funky on me. And then we'll get this name on. All right, so that's on. I'm going to go from the inside out. That is the name. That's how. Um, that's it. That's all the decal work for this cup. Like I said, just a little abstract design of the fish. We have a little face, the name, the scales, and these little hooks. So we're gonna get um, another layer of epoxy on this, and depending on how that falls, uh, it's possible this could be the last little bit. All right, I was awesome enough to um, not video the last few coats of epoxy. <laughs> so sorry about that. I did put two coats just to make sure that it was in there nice, flawless finish. And it really is just a simple design. It comes out great. So I hope you guys like it. Again, check us out on um, TikTok and Facebook, our Sippy Couture community group. And please subscribe. Bye, guys.